This is Gary Atensi with CNTV, and today we're in Henderson, Colorado. I'm here at International Hearing Dogs, Inc. Since 1979, they have been turning shelter dogs into hearing dogs and giving dogs and owners a new lease on life, not only locally, but across the globe. I'm here with Valerie Foss, who is the President, Executive Director. Thanks so much for joining us here today. Let's start off a little bit about yourself. I mean, um, quite honestly, you joined the organization here in 1988 formally, mm -hmm. but it was many years before that that you actually were involved. I mean, basically understood this organization growing up. You have now traveled internationally to really expand this organization out and program into other parts of the world. Tell me how this got started for you. <laughs> yeah, it started when my mom um, started the program in 1975 with Agnes McGrath, uh, Sandy Kilstrup, and Mullen Wood, and the four ladies started a pilot study to understand how hearing dogs could help people that were deaf and hearing impaired. And um, from that pilot study, we found that we could use animal shelter dogs, and uh, they didn't need to be large dogs. They could be any size for this type training. Wow. I mean, that's a great story. Using hearing dogs, I mean, thanks to your organization, is pretty commonplace today. Yet if we go back to the early 70s, that was not the case. Why is it that um, dogs were actually chosen back then as, as pretty much a natural fit for this? Well, with dogs, um, their hearing is so much better than a human's ear, and they can sense when things are going to happen. And we found um, with dogs that they um, had this natural ability to alert you to sounds, and we just started formally training and customizing um, the dogs to what the person might need the dog to alert them to in the home. Interesting. I mean, um, this new concept in human services that began way back then, um, it's amazing that you can actually trace the roots of that program right here to Denver, Colorado. Does that surprise a lot of people that it actually began all right here? Yes, it does surprise a lot of people. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's great recognition now. And uh, we've placed over 1,265 hearing dogs all across the country and Canada and helped uh, programs in Japan, Australia, and Norway get started. So it's pretty uh, exciting. It's very good. I mean, the early founders really had, uh, they really took part in a lot of studies that probably based a lot of the methods that are still used today, I would imagine, as far as the training goes. Yes, when they started, they knew other types of dog training, but it had to test other methods to see what would work and what wouldn't work with the training. It's amazing. Let's start, first of all, let's talk about the dogs. Um, where are these dogs found? These are animal sheltered dogs. You have placed over 1,200 of them um, across the states. What are we looking for I mean, when, you're, when you're basically seeking out a dog? Um, when we go into the shelter, we're looking for a very outgoing dog, uh, six months to a year old, um, very energetic, outgoing, loves people, um, just has that a lot of ambition and outgoing personality that we can channel their energy into training. It's, it's really actually a beautiful story when you think about unwanted animals now becoming highly valued animals and also pets, even companions for folks that you pretty much have placed in every single state across the nation. Yes, um, it's amazing, um, rewarding for us, taking dogs that are unwanted or and don't have a purpose and giving them a new chance and helping people also with this program. Like you said, we're talking about mixed breeds. Um, they have to be healthy, usually young, but like you say, a personality to um, eagerly learn and really to become become the ears of their owners, as you say. This has to be quite a pretty intensive training program. Tell me about the training a little bit. Um, the training takes about six to eight months. It's all custom training for the person's needs. So when the person fills out an application, they tell me all about their situation and what they need and what size dog they would like. And I try to match them with a dog that's going to work well for their situation. And the training um, is all customized. So if they're in a wheelchair, walker, have a vision problem along with their deafness, then we will train for that situation. Um, but all these dogs go out in public and 
by law they can go with the person to their workplace in any public situation and with their orange collar and leash and vest and so we have to train the dogs to be very professional out in public. That is fantastic. Being a victim of sudden hearing loss myself, um, I was soon to realize that people take for granted what our hearing does for us. Simple things from basically a knock on the door, possibly a doorbell, um, even to that phone call or maybe a text notification audio or even that my child crying in the next room. These are all things we take for granted. These are exactly the things these dogs are set up to help with. Yes, absolutely. They give the person security and independence without worrying about if their baby is crying at night and they needed to be alerted or if an emergency situation happened and they had a fire in their home, the dog would wake them up and let them know. So there's a lot of things that we do take for granted that we could do. What are the requirements for people out there that are applying for a dog? I mean, are we talking a complete deafness or hard of hearing? What, what is the decibel range there? Um, we require a 65% decibel loss in both ears. Um, if they hear too much, they're reacting to the sounds and the dog won't work. So they have to have at least a 65% or greater um, for the dog to work. Um, let me ask you, the training program itself, um, this is quite a facility you have out here. Um, did this expand throughout the years as well? Um, actually, it started with the help of Division of Wildlife, helped us with, uh, they leased the building to us, and we were able to have the whole building here. So we've been here since 1975, and uh, they've been very supportive of us and our program. That is wonderful. The, um, this is a very customized approach, like you say, for each recipient of the dog. Um, does the trainer actually go into the home for the first few days and kind of get them acquainted with the dog? Yes. Um, once the dog is fully trained here at the facility, a trainer will travel with the dog to the person's home and work with them three to five days to teach them how to use the dog in their own home. Everyone's home is a little bit different, so we help the dog to get adjusted and work one-on-one -on -one with the person to help them learn to become a team with their dog. Once the 90-day trial period is over and they are successful, uh, they are now a certified dog. Um, they're able to place the orange collar on, and that's got to be kind of exciting for the program to see that, that whole process evolve. Yes, it's always very exciting when we do a certification because that means it's been successful and we've helped the person and dog and it's always just a wonderful, rewarding feeling. The training program itself for one dog, what is the actual cost for that whole training for them to go through that? The training and placement of a hearing dog is about $8,000. So it's very expensive. I believe that. I think, I think it's easy to, to understand and for people to believe that this is a game changer for a lot of people's lives to be able to bring a dog in there. I think what's really unbelievable is actually the cost to the recipient. Tell me about that. Yeah, there's no cost to the recipient. Um, we want to provide our service free of charge to them. So we are funded by donations and foundations service clubs like Lions Clubs and Sertoma, um, Grange Groups and other, other groups that assist us with that. Great story that I had to come out and share. Viewers, take a look at the bottom of the screen right there. What you're going to see is their website. First of all, on the website, take a look at their mission statement. Basically, they're going out and finding shelter dogs and turning them to very useful dogs, life-changing dogs for, for many recipients out there. Um, they've really placed um, dogs in every single state across the nation, um, also up north into Canada. They are international now. We basically have brought the program out there as well. You can also take a look at the staff, um, board of directors, and really learn more about these dogs. They've got a dog of the month right there that you can go check out as well. Many events um, that, that take place out there. And one of the most important things is the fact that how you can basically help and get involved. Obviously not all the viewers out there are in need of a hearing dog, but they can definitely be involved. Let's talk about some of those ways. Um, first of the ways obviously would be probably in uh, volunteering, just their time. I mean, many events out there, office work, you name it, you probably have a, a project that can fit almost anyone. Right, we do. We, we use volunteers to help with socializing the dogs. Um, in our office, um, when we have fundraising events, we are always in need of volunteers to help help us. What about those that want to make a personal or a corporate donation? How are they best able to do that? Um, they can do it online at hearingdog.org. 
they're welcome to mail us um, the funding to our address. Excellent. Um, basically, this is a program that began as, um, as a hearing ear program. Um, it evolved in name, and it also evolved in the scope of how you're able to get out there and really have put this program everywhere. Has this been rewarding for you, basically taking something that your mother started and, uh, and continuing forward, not only placing these great dogs in, in great homes, but also uh, providing recipients with something that has to be life-changing? Yes, every time we place a dog, it's very rewarding, and I can't imagine doing anything else. It's just um, a great program, and um, I enjoy working with the people and the dogs. It's just amazing. Wonderful. Last time, viewers, take a look at the bottom of the screen. You're going to see their contact information right there. You can also take a look at the website. Check them out on Facebook. Uh, click the like right there. They'll let you know of any um, walks, runs they've got going on throughout the year, any programs, events. These are all ways that you can get involved, not only as a volunteer, but also as a, as a person who comes out and, and supports this group. They've got basically a wall full of supporters out there on a plaque um, in their headquarters right here in Denver, Colorado. Um, check them out there and um, understand this is something that that was created back in the 70s um, basically by a, by an individual who realized she had lost her dog and realized that this was a natural fit for a dog to be able to help in this way this is a program that really pioneered this entire vision located right here in Denver that is international hearing dogs turning sheltered dogs into hearing dogs this is Gary Atensu with CNTV and if you don't know now you know. This is Gary Atensi with CNTV, and today we're in Denver, Colorado. I'm here at Northwest Roofing. Since 1963, they have been the first choice for roof replacement, repair, and home improvements for the folks across the entire state of Colorado and into southern Wyoming. I'm here with Paul Reed, Jr., who is the president of operations. Thanks for joining us here today, Paul. Let's start off a little bit about yourself. I mean, uh, basically, um, you've, been, you've been holding up a lot of the projects here all the way from Alamosa, Colorado, all the way up into Cheyenne. Um, share with me a little bit about yourself, how it is that you got involved in this type of industry. You know, over 20 years ago, I started in this industry kind of on a freak deal. My dad sent me out to help my cousin. My cousin had a roofing company, went out to help him for a, do, for a few days, and I just fell in love with it. Interesting. I mean, so quite honestly, this is something you've done for many, many years, a couple decades. Um, obviously, it's in your blood. Let me ask you this. I mean, we can pretty much assume that the largest investment most consumers ever make is our, is our home, our residence. And uh, basically, the roof is what's protecting the residence here for us. Um, obviously, it's 24 hours a day, seven days a week against the elements. A roofing job probably isn't something that you want to leave to the amateur. Would I be safe in saying that? Oh, absolutely. You know, the roof is, is the most important thing to protect. Probably your biggest investment you're ever going to make in your life, which is your home. 
Interesting. Here in Colorado, we have beautiful climate, yet that climate can be uh, pretty devastating on um, outside roofs. Um, everything from heavy snow in the winter time, a lot of wind throughout the year, and um, even pretty pretty damaging hail. Probably a pretty commonplace. Um, do these cause more damage than people probably even realize? Oh, you know, most people don't actually realize, but Colorado is the second leading state behind Texas of actually hail damage homes every year. Um, Colorado between Denver, Colorado Springs, Southern Colorado, clear up to the Fort Collins, we get hail every single year. We're only behind Texas as far as hail damaged homes every year. I had no idea of that. One of the things I see is basically um, prevention has to be a big thing for folks here. I mean, before the storms hit or a small little problem becomes big, tell me how prevention can kind of play a role here. What is an annual roof inspection? Is that something that is, it is recommended? Absolutely. We do an annual 10-point inspection on all of our customers, which means we come out, evaluate a full exterior evaluate, evaluation, get up on the roof, check, make sure all the flashings are in there properly, the pipe jacks are sealed, the vents are adequate, the soffit vents are still venting. We do things like that. That's, that's one thing that's very important to make sure you get that lifetime of your roof that you can possibly get. So we're talking about a pretty, a pretty in-depth uh, report, if you will. We're talking not just looking at, uh, from the side of the street and taking a look at the roof. You're looking, like you say, ventilation, uh, making sure that the flashing's there, even gutters are, are holding up. Um, is this something that you provide as a service, uh, as a complimentary? Oh, absolutely, because it's kind of a misconception. Most people walk outside, look up at their roof and go, you know, looks good from here. You know, most time it does look good from the ground, but once you jump up on the roof and you actually see someone like myself or people that work for me that's been in this industry for this long, we know what to look for. We know how to prevent issues that may arise. Obviously, prevention is a key, but as we know, things do happen. Uh, when, some, when damage occurs on somebody's roof, I would imagine there's kind of a panic mode that goes on with them. Um, you know, waking up, deciding who they're going to call, who they're going to trust. Um, at that point, it, you probably don't want to be dealing with insurance companies, and that's got to be overwhelming for a lot of consumers. Is the insurance part of it something you guys are able to kind of walk us through a little bit? Yes, that's what we actually specialize in, is dealing with the insurance companies on the consumer's behalf. So we come out, evaluate the roof, and look at it to see, does this qualify for an insurance claim? And from that point, we walk you through on how to start that process, and we're with you all every step of the way to make sure that, number one, you know what to call and tell the insurance what's going on, meeting the insurance company out there for them to ensure that the adjuster that comes out is getting everything documented properly, paid for properly. And there's a few organizations that we're part of that that do um, help the companies, excuse me, help the homeowners vet the right contractor because there's so many contractors running around here in Denver, Metro Denver and Colorado because of licensing issues. There's, sure. There is kind of a lack of vetting the proper contractor. So that's something that we're very passionate about working with homeowners and education. I would think from a consumer standpoint, I would be relieved to know that I have an ally in my corner dealing with the insurance company, um, not only making sure that I'm getting full use of my insurance, but also it probably even speeds up the process, making sure my roof gets um, taken care of faster when somebody's able to speak with them that understands the whole process. Yes, that is correct. You know, most insurance companies, when they come out, unfortunately, they do underpay most of the time. You know, they're in business, right? They're not in business to come out here and write a check for you to replace your roof. So we're here to make sure that you're put back whole before you were, like you were before the storm. Wonderful. Not only is your company specialized in working with insurance companies, but the company itself is insured. I mean, is that important for people to look at, making sure you're dealing with a, with a company out there that is properly insured um, so that you're not ha left liable? Yes, it is. It's a very important thing to look for. You know, our company, we carry over $2 million of general liability insurance and $1 million of workman's comp insurance. You know, it, it is construction. Things do happen. As a homeowner, you need to make sure that the contractor you're working with has those insurances just in case something ever does happen. So when we're looking at somebody who is maybe a so-called professional and they can't answer that question and make sure that they're properly insured, this should be a definite red flag um, for folks out there um, to probably steer in a different direction. Yes. You know, a lot, of, a lot of roofing contractors will actually carry around a liability insurance or a workman's comp insurance that's not really for roofing. They'll use an insurance company and they'll say they're for drywall or for painting. So if something were to happen on a lot of contractors, 
you're actually not covered. So it's important to look at the actual document and make sure it is for roofing. Excellent. Um, as we said before, obviously the roof is protecting your home, but it's also protecting the contents of your home. And we have valuable things in our home. I would say it's even more so when it comes to commercial roofs. We're talking about protecting livestock, protecting data, computers, the whole nine yards. Is commercial an area that your company goes into as well? Yeah, we do a considerable amount of commercial. You know, in the commercial, it's, it's even just as important because if the roof's leaking, you know, it's cost of business. You know, they have to shut down that section of the restaurant. They have to shut down that section of their store. So, I mean, cost of business, it's very vital for us to get in there, take care of what we need to, and get that roof stopped from leaking. Never thought about that before. I mean, not only is the, is the damage costing them money, but actually stopping business is definitely costing them money as well. Um, you guys are able to work on a variety of roofs out there. Um, we're talking about everything from hot tar roof, metal roof, even the new uh, cool roofs. These are all things you guys are pretty well um, versed in. We are very versed in every type of roof system out there. One of the things that, um, that you provide, um, you've been in business for many years now, obviously top quality service paired with um, top quality product. I mean, like you say, a, a, basically a, a better product makes for a better roof. Um, who are some of the manufacturers that you guys are certified with? You know, one of the ones we're most proud of is with Owens Corning. We're a platinum preferred contractor with them, which means that we were vetted into the program where we're in the top 1% of all roofing contractors in the entire United States. Um, we're certified in flat roofs with Genflex and uh, Geico roof coatings, certain teed as, a, as the one, but like I said, the Owens Corning is probably our most prestigious one that we have. So not every, I uh, imagine not every contractor here, um, Denver, Colorado Springs, can make that same claim? No, out of the thousands of contractors in Colorado, there are only six of us with the certification of the Platinum. Let me ask you this. Obviously, the roofs are protecting our homes. Um, what about folks out there that are, are looking for a different alternative when it comes to siding? Maybe they're tired of painting their house every three or four years. Is siding something else you can help them with as well? Yes, we uh, actually install a James Hardy product, which is a color plus, which means the color is actually baked into there. So when we put that siding up, it is, it is fairly hail resistant, and we're able to put that on to the color that you select, and, and it's really a maintenance-free product. Roofing, roof replacement, new roofs, roof repair, um, siding, um, even window replacement. These are all things your team has gone out there and able to provide for. Full exterior service, absolutely. That, that is very impressive. Um, let me ask you this. All the projects out there that you've done um, across the state here, obviously you pride, your fact, pride yourselves on the fact of great quality, great service. Um, has it been rewarding work for you getting out there and uh, seeing some of these homes come together? Yes, it is. You know, after many major storms from tornadoes in Windsor in 2007, excuse me, 2008, to some of the devastating hailstorms we have, you know, we take a lot of pride in going out there providing a quality product and actually getting people back into their homes. You know, it's, it's a devastating time for people when a storm rolls through, you know, windows are busted out, siding is gone, the roof is leaking, and when we're able to come in there and, and do it in a quick, efficient way, that is very rewarding. Absolutely. Um, obviously, a, a local company here, um, you're basically dealing with customers who become clients. These clients become your friends. How important is it for the company to give back to the community? That's one of our things we're really passionate about. You know, we do a lot of work with Denver Children's Home, Wounded Warrior Project, There With Care. You know, we figure we can't keep it. You know, we have to pass it on as well. So we're very passionate about giving back to the community. I mean, without the community and the support that we get, you know, and coming out and doing jobs, you know, we wouldn't be in business, so we give a lot back to the community and, and enjoy every minute of it. Excellent. Enjoying every minute of it. 100% customer satisfaction is the mission this company put together back in the 60s. They are still here today serving people across the entire state, also into southern Wyoming. Uh, basically, from that first phone call all the way to the final cleanup, they're going to make sure that you are 100% um, satisfied. Check them out. Their website is at the bottom of the screen right there. You can basically uh, take a look at some of the projects they've done out there, take a look at the gallery as well. Um, make sure to read the reviews. Basically, um, this is a company that has put together uh, projects for many folks out there, be it residential or commercial. Um, better business, A-plus rating out there. They are certified across the board. Check out all the things there on the website, but it's real easy. Click on the button and uh, request for them to come on out and do a free estimate for you. Once again, that is the Northwest Roofing, located right here in Denver, Colorado. This is Gary Atensi with CNTV. And if you don't know, now you know.